Hey, it's Kendall, Eris and me, and today we're going to take a behind the scenes look at compiling and interpreting. If you've ever wondered how your computer can understand a program that you write when really what is it but a text file to begin with, then watch this video and maybe I can help you solve that mystery. We'll begin with the compilation process, transition to the interpretation process, and finish by comparing the two. There are five major steps to the compiling process. Lexical analysis, done by what's called the lexer, syntactic analysis performed by the parser, semantic analysis or type checking, code optimization, and code generation. The input to the compilation process is your program, but only as a sequence of characters. The job of the compiler is to determine the validity and meaning of those characters and generate assembly code to perform the tasks they describe. The output is a series of executable statements that your computer CPU can process directly. So, how do we get from a meaningless stream of characters to executable assembly statements? We start at the beginning with lexical analysis. The mechanism that performs lexical analysis for a compiler is called the lexer, and its input is the stream of characters that make up your program. The lexer divides this sequence of characters into tokens, or the legal pieces of information for that language. Data types, punctuation, legal variable names, operators, reserved words, and literals are all examples of tokens. When the lexer is finished, the stream of characters will have been transformed into a stream of tokens. The next stage of compiling is syntactic analysis. The sequence of tokens handed off by the lexer becomes the input for the syntax analyzer or parser. It is the parser's duty to construct grammatically correct statements from the sequence of tokens using the grammar rules of the language. The output of this process is an internal representation of these statements, usually in the form of an abstract syntax tree. Syntax errors, such as missing semicolons or operands, are caught in the syntactic analysis stage. Now that the syntax of your program has been validated, the compiler enters the semantic analysis phase, performed by what's sometimes called the type checker. Taking the abstract syntax tree from the parser as input, the type checker identifies semantic errors within your program. Semantic errors may be syntactically correct and adhere to the grammar rules of the language, but still be invalid within the context of the code. Consider an undeclared variable assignment. The assignment statement itself is legal, but without the variable first being declared, the statement is invalid. Other semantic errors include multiple declarations of the same variable, data type inconsistencies in assignment statements, and calling functions with the wrong number or type of arguments. The output of the semantic analysis phase is called intermediate code. After semantic analysis, the compiler moves to the code optimization stage. The code optimizer intercepts the intermediate code being passed from semantic analysis before it can reach the code generator. In this phase, your program is combed for statements that could be described more effectively to produce faster or more resourceful code. Examples of code optimizations include the evaluation of constants and reordering code to improve cache performance. The output here is simply optimized intermediate code. Probably the most straightforward of the steps in the compilation process, code generation, takes the optimized intermediate code and translates it into machine code, or object code. The object code generation is what makes compilation platform dependent, as each computer might have its own set of assembly language instructions and rules. However, it's also what allows compiled programs to execute so fast because they are transformed into these statements that your CPU can execute directly. So what is it that makes interpreters so different? Now that you have an understanding of the compilation process, let's take a look at some of the mechanics of an interpreter.
Compilers and interpreters actually have a lot in common. In fact, three out of the five steps of the compilation process are also part of the interpretive process. Like compilers, interpreters implement lexical, syntactic, and semantic analysis, each with inputs, outputs, and functionality similar to those of the compiler. Unlike a compiler, the next step after semantic analysis for an interpreter is not code optimizations and machine code generation. Instead, your program is ready to run as is. Since your program hasn't been converted into something your CPU can understand directly, the interpreting application must also be responsible for running your program. Using a form of intermediate code generated by the semantic analyzer, the interpreter begins performing the tasks described by your program. However, though the program has been syntactically and semantically validated, an interpreter still must analyze each statement before it can process it. This slows down the execution process substantially. Now that we have both the compilation process and the interpretive process under our belts, why don't we take the rest of this video to compare the two? Which process happens faster? Which results in faster executing code? What else? Although the amount of time spent analyzing and processing your code varies from compiler to compiler and interpreter to interpreter, it is generally the case that an interpreter will spend less time preparing your code for execution than a compiler would. The extra time the compiler spends optimizing intermediate code and generating machine code is usually more than compensated for during execution. The execution speed of a compiled language is much faster than that of an interpreted language. Recall that a program written in a compiled language will end up as machine code, or statements that your CPU can execute directly. If a program is to be interpreted, the interpreting application must perform some analyzation at runtime, which slows down the program's execution. Recall that compiled programs are translated from a sequence of characters into machine code, which is only understood by one particular kind of machine. This means that compiled programs are platform dependent and must be recompiled to run on a different targeted platform. However, Programs written with interpreted languages may be executed directly on any machine or platform that has an interpreter. This gives interpreted languages the advantage of platform independence. There is a third approach that is a hybrid between compiled and interpreted languages. It is often referred to as just-in-time or JIT compilation or dynamic translation. This method takes advantage of the platform independence and relative simplicity of higher level interpreted languages and combines them with the speed and efficiency of lower level compiled languages. JIT compilation converts intermediately compiled code into native machine code at runtime or just before the code is executed. Two extremely popular examples of this are Sun's Java and Microsoft's .NET runtime environment. Java code is compiled to platform-independent bytecode. This bytecode is fed into a virtual machine which translates it into machine code as the program is executed. Microsoft's .NET framework compiles .NET compliant code into a common intermediate language which is then translated directly into machine code at runtime as it executes. Microsoft's common intermediate language approach offers a huge benefit of language independence. Since each language is compiled to the same intermediate code, they are able to communicate seamlessly. Thanks for watching! I hope you were able to follow along and have a better understanding of the compilation and interpretation processes. Until next time!